anger as Donald Trump's team threatens to expand the immigration ban. Waves of protesters take to America's airports demanding the president reverse his order. He represents the dark side of humanity. Um, and we're not going to put up with it. We're not going to put up with it. Here, criticism grows of Theresa May's reluctance to denounce Trump's policy, with calls now to cancel his state visit invitation. And Roger's return, Federal lifts the Australian Open trophy, a record 18th Grand Slam title. This is ITV News with Ranveer Singh. Good evening. There's more confusion and anger tonight over US President Donald Trump's immigration ban on people from seven Muslim-majority countries. An American judge has ordered any deportations be stopped, but the White House insists the order will have little effect. And the president himself said today the US needs strong borders now. Here's our Washington correspondent Robert Moore with the latest. First, the executive order that shocked much of the world. And now the reaction across America as immigrants and activists take to the streets and hold rallies at airports across the country. Set the refugees free! Welcome to the USA! This was the scene at New York's JFK airport overnight after news emerged that the US had slammed its door closed to all refugees for four months and to all visitors from seven countries for at least three months. Democrats are describing this as a moment of shame. I cannot believe this is happening. I knew that Donald Trump would be bad. Boy, not this bad, not this fast. Potentially more significant than these airport protests are the legal challenges that are guaranteed to follow. Advocates for refugees and immigrants say this executive order is fundamentally un-American and they promised to test it in court every step of the way. In fact, the very first court ruling allowed a few hundred people detained at airports to be released amid celebrations and tears of relief. Even military families turned out to express their dismay. 22-year military family, this is atrocious. This is not what we fought for, to, to ban people from coming in here. Donald Trump does not represent America. He represents, he's the, he, he represents the dark side of humanity. As we filmed, immigration lawyers were setting up free legal clinics on the floor of the arrivals hall. But the constitutional test lies ahead. And administration officials were today not backing down, but doubling down with talk of extending the ban. Perhaps other countries need to be added, but this is all done for the protection of, of Americans. And waiting another three days and waiting another three weeks is something that we don't want to get wrong. And President Trump himself last night insisted there should be no drama following his executive order. You see it at the airport, you see it all over. It's working out very nicely. But the reality is of widespread confusion as the United States lurches into territory that is causing disquiet in some quarters and outrage in others. Robert Moore, ITV News, Washington. Here, the Prime Minister has rallied from her initial refusal to condemn the ban yesterday, now saying she does not agree with it and that she will challenge Mr Trump if British nationals are adversely affected. Sir Mo Farah is one Briton who believes he could fall foul of this ban because he is Somali-born and now lives in the US with his family. Here's our political correspondent, Libby Vina. Theresa May's failure to confront Donald Trump over his travel ban yesterday led to widespread criticism from MPs. Now the sporting hero, Sir Mo Farah, who was born in Somalia, has joined those bluntly saying the US president has got it wrong. In a statement, he said, on the 1st of January this year, Her Majesty the Queen made me a knight of the realm. On the 27th of January, President Donald Trump seems to have made me an alien. I am a British citizen who has lived in America for the past six years. It's deeply troubling that I will have to tell my children that Daddy might not be able to come home. Among others worried about their family, Tory MP Nadim Sahawi, who was born in Iraq. If you think of 
what my family's going through, where we're having to actually cancel our children, our two sons, coming back to the UK because we're worried they won't be let back in. Um, what are other people going through? This is, this is a very bad place to be. Theresa May is now facing calls to withdraw this invitation to Donald Trump. I have today been able to convey Her Majesty the Queen's hope that President Trump and the First Lady would pay a state visit to the United Kingdom later this year, and I'm delighted that the President has accepted that invitation. I'm not happy about him coming here until that ban is lifted, quite honestly, I'm because look at, look at what's happening uh, with, those, with those countries. How many more is it going to be? And what's going to be the long-term effect of this on the rest of the world? Today, the Foreign Secretary tweeted, we will protect the rights and freedoms of UK nationals, home and abroad. Divisive and wrong to stigmatise because of nationality. But why hadn't Mrs May spoken out earlier? Yeah, the Prime Minister is not a shoot from the hip uh, type of politician. She wants to see the evidence. She wants to understand precisely what the implications are. The implications of her newfound friendship with President Trump, though, are proving a good deal more complex than she might have hoped. Indeed, what a change for her. Libby is here, Mrs May, under an enormous amount of pressure now. Yes, nearly half a million people have signed a petition demanding that she withdraw that invitation for Donald Trump to come on a state visit here. They're not calling for a ban on him coming as president, but they don't want to see a state visit. Also, there's the question of what is the position regarding dual nationals. We still don't know tonight whether British citizens, who are also citizens of those countries that he has banned travel from, whether they are included in that ban. The Foreign Office is saying they're doing all they can to try and clarify the situation. But as I said, several thousand people, perhaps several hundred thousand mm. people still in limbo tonight. Libby Vina, thank you. Well, let's go back to Robert, who is in Washington live. Um, Robert, of course, during the campaign, in fact, he promised a full ban on Muslims entering the country. This is some way off from that. But is there more to come? And more importantly, can he force it through? Well, let's be clear about this. This is already, in effect, a ban on about 218 million people. Uh, that's the total population of those seven predominantly Muslim nations. And yes, there is talk of extending it. You heard that uh, in my report. But it's not at all clear to me that it would be viable to extend it to countries like Saudi Arabia and Pakistan that are powerful, that have the ability to retaliate in terms, perhaps, of intelligence sharing or even in terms of economic measures as well. I think it's going to depend, of course, on the courts, but also also on politics as well. Republicans here in Congress are quiet, but behind the scenes, very alarmed. And in the last few minutes, the White House has just issued a statement saying that right now, President Trump 100% stands by his executive order. Robert Mort, live in Washington tonight. Thank you. The US military says one of its elite special forces has died in the first covert military operation of Donald Trump's presidency. Three other Americans were wounded in the raid on an al-Qaeda headquarters in Yakla, Yemen, yesterday. The Pentagon says 14 militants died in the ra raid. Reports say a number of civilians also died. At least 11 people are now reported to have died in Chile in wildfires which have been described as the worst in the country's history. Many of those killed are firefighters battling more than 100 separate fires. About half of those are still out of control. Dan Rivers has more. They're being described as the worst forest fires in Chile's history. 135 separate blazes which have engulfed nearly 1.2 million acres. Firefighters have been battling them for two weeks, but strong winds have fanned ribbons of flame which stretch for miles. It's not clear what sparked them, but arson has not been ruled out. This firefighter says small fires are reappearing here. We're trying to get them under control so they don't spread to other areas. We're trying to get control with the resources we have. The town of Santa Olga has been completely destroyed. 1,500 houses incinerated as firefighters were forced to abandon it for their own safety as the flames advanced. Across the region, six to 7,000 are now homeless. In many places, farmers are trying to douse the fires themselves, but it is pitifully inadequate in the face of this enormous disaster. This man says yesterday we were here at night. We stopped a fire there. There are about 50 here today, all farmers. 
The Chilean government has called for international help. Now firefighters from Colombia, Mexico and France are heading to the area to assist with a disaster that remains out of control. Dan Rivers, ITV News. And finally, Roger Federer has won his 18th Grand Slam tennis title. The Australian Open final was a return to the days when he and arch-rival Rafa Nadal would regularly slug it out in five-set thrillers. Chris Morn has the story. With the trophy in his grasp, Roger Federer had completed one of the greatest tennis triumphs of modern times. And it was achieved at the expense of Rafa Nadal, so often his nemesis. Both had battled back from injuries and conquered opponents to renew their rivalry. It's a quality finish. Federer started the brighter. But Nadal, who'd enjoyed the upper hand in the majority of their personal duels, fought back. There were stunning moments. This from Federer. Oh, my goodness. The momentum swung back and forth. But a 26-shot rally deep in the fifth set was another test of physical and mental resilience. Whoa! Federer won five games in a row, and in the end, Nadal turned to technology to save him. But Federer's shot was good. He'd won his 18th Grand Slam. It's definitely very special. I said that also before the finals. If I were to win against Rafa, it'd be super special and very sweet. The only goal for me is keep going. And I believe that if I, if I, if I have my body in the, in the right conditions, I, I can have a great year because I feel that I'm playing well. Tennis has two of its senior stars back for 2017. Chris Morn, ITV News. And that's it. I'm back with the news at 10. See you then. Until then, have a very good evening. Bye-bye.